saying congrats to Gerald Bourget. Bourget. Congrats, man. Thank you got married, you. tied the knot, huh? Thank you. Appreciate it. Way to go. I did it. Happy for you, man. Thank you. Best of luck with everything. It's going to be great. You got any advice for him? Advice, uh, do whatever she tells you to do, and you'll be just fine. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, uh, obviously looking at Philly, uh, Maxi is a guy that, that gets to the rim, uh, that three later score, uh, so maybe that challenge is facing him. Yeah, he's as dynamic uh, of a guard as any in the league. Uh, his speed is, uh, you know, very few, few players out here out there that have his type of speed, uh, but, a, but can also shoot with the range that he shoots, shoots it with. So um, he's become one hell of a player, and, uh, you know, we've got to do a great job tomorrow. Yeah, we're not formally signing him till tomorrow. He, he did come into town, uh, you know, uh, today, and um, you know he was uh, here, but not participating in practice. And we'll formally sign him tomorrow. We expect to have him available. What are you initially hoping to get? I know you said depth for him, but in a perfect world, what would you like to get out of him? Yeah, just uh, you know, get a chance to see where where he's at, uh, you know, with his his phase of his career. He's trying to still uh, compete for an opportunity. So you know, we'll be watching his, uh, you know, if he's able to play in some of the pickup games that we have, our off day bumps uh, and whatnot. See how he fits around our, our group uh, as a personality. He's, he's a guy that everybody loves. You know what I mean? Like he's he's a very well liked, uh, respected guy in this in this league in this uh, NBA player fraternity. Um, but we're gonna see where his game is at, and um, you know, again, I don't know how much uh, he'll play for us. Uh, he's really here for, for from a depth standpoint because Saban Lee only has four games left. Coach, you mentioned his character. He was just known as a big locker room guy too in Boston. If he is able to continue and stay with the Suns, how do you see him fitting in with this group and, and making the guys better as being a leader? Yeah, well, I think somebody that uh, you know has been the best player on his team, you know, still uh, transitioning to a, a different part of his career. You know, where he's trying to make a team and uh, battle through the injuries that he's faced through, uh, throughout his career. I think those those experiences uh, can be invaluable. And you know, obviously, he's a winner. You know, so um, you know, when you have a, a high character guy that's a winner that's well liked, you know, he can be, have a strong impact in the locker room. Coach, what did you see on tape from Isaiah to make you guys feel the trigger? I just know his game. You know, and to me, it was just a matter of seeing it, that he's healthy by seeing him play a few G League games. Um, you know, and I had him a couple years ago. We, we looked at him when I was with LA on a 10 day, and um, you know, I just know he can play. And you know, we just we just needed somebody that you know, that we trusted that could give us some some minutes if we encounter some injuries, you know, during this stretch while he's going to be here. So, um, but watching him play, you know, in recent games in the G League, it showed us that he's you know he's functional and healthy. Coach, when you look at the three-point defense against teams that are really good at that, like the Celtics and the Bucks. I know protecting the eight has been a point of emphasis for you guys. Where did it feel like there were the breakdowns of overhelping or falling yeah. team? Yeah, awareness. A lot of overhelping, a lot of short closeouts. Um, you know, the spread five coverages, uh, you know, gave us problems. Um, we didn't execute them well enough. We have protections built in, you know, to keep our centers on the floor, but uh, we didn't execute them very well. Um, but, but but anything when you have a, a you know, a, a three-point barrage like you saw in those two games, they're all shapes and sizes, you know, but uh, the general urgency, I thought we played uh, really hard, especially when we got down and, you know, battled to fight back in the game. But, you know, the one area that we, we didn't play hard enough was the urgency to the three-point line. When you, you mentioned the sense of urgency, when you look at the standings and how one win or loss can drop, drop you from... Yeah, we're in the playoffs before the playoffs, right? Uh, all of us want to get into the top six. Uh, we are confident that if we are in a play-in game, we will win. Uh, but there's too many variables, you know, with a one-game situation like that. You know, somebody could get the flu, somebody could roll an ankle, you know. I mean, there's just, uh, you've seen it in, in some of these play-in games where key guys are out. And, um, you know, we want to stay away from those uh, those types of situations and, um, you know, hopefully go on a run starting them off. Do you sense that urgency from the guys to avoid the play as do. much as possible? Yeah. Not because we're scared of it, but just because of everything I just said. You know, you want to finish in the top six and, uh, secure yourself. Coach, I know you've talked about matchups with Thad and whether to, when to use him and when not to use him. In a small ball situation, be someone that you're thinking could be the five with Kevin at the four, or, or is that you've been part of the process and trying to figure out where he can and can't push? 
Yeah, I mean, he's really depth to be behind our centers if we don't have Drew or Nurk. And, um, you know, right now the, the small lineups of, of just putting Eric or Royce in there um, with KD at the five it has been a, a better formula. But, you know, again, Faz here for depth while we're, while we're healthy. You know, he's probably not going to play in those situations. But if we have injuries to, to some of our, you know, Royce, Eric, small ball options or to one of our centers, you know, then he becomes an extremely valuable uh, piece of this puzzle. So uh, he's someone that we, uh, we really trust, you know, in terms of uh, his game and his abilities. Um, you know, but we have those, those other looks first. Coach, how can Isaiah help impact your perimeter defense? Obviously, there was the barrage of three against Boston and also against Milwaukee. So. The offense is there with Isaiah, but what do you see that he can bring to the table with improving that? Yeah, well, obviously because of his size, he's always been someone that you have to you have to protect, you know, in terms of perimeter ISOs and uh, guys trying to post him up and things like that. Um, you know, but we have protections in place. Coach, I'm also wondering, Final Fours this week, you know, obviously the Kentucky fans spoke about them and swear by them. Who, who are your Final Four picks? I have not even looked at the bracket yet. Uh, if, you, if I'm being completely honest, I saw that the Wisconsin Badgers are in it. My daughter's a, a Badger, and you know we're rooting for Coach Guard and uh, all them guys up there in Madison getting ready. I want a, I want a nice, a nice fun tournament run for my daughter's college experience. So go, go Badgers! Uh, if they do get matched up with Kentucky, then you know, then we have a, you know, we'll have to figure that, that are, uh, you know, figure that out. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Go Cats, though, too. Guard a three-point line by a mile, our top emphasis um, with our film session, and uh, did a lot of drill work, you know, to, just to double down on the urgency that's expected of me uh, and with regard to getting better, better defending the three. And then offensive organization. One of the things Grayson said after the game was that once they started hitting a couple, you got to run them off the line. But what's the challenge of running out there knowing that they go by you and the help comes and it's kicking it to somebody else? Yeah, I mean, you, you got to, first of all, you got to you got to continue and never stop rotating. Okay, second of all, you do have to get, uh, get to the three-point shooters not only after they've made a few, but to start the game. Don't let them get going. And, um, you know, a lot of times just fly-by helps just – just lead to another backside three, you know, with redrive. So, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta hopefully run them off. Uh, to me, we, we talk about arriving on a catch, be in your gaps, you know, show a presence, but you know, close out with urgency to arrive on the catch and contain your man. That's the best closeout is when you get there, you take away the three and you don't get beat off the bounce. When you look at Max and what he's become as a player, what's that about? Well, obviously he's all star. You know, he's a dynamic guard in our league now, and uh, just his ability. He's a three level scorer. His ability to get in the paint, um, and finish at the rim, high layups, floaters, uh, decent touch at mid range. They don't shoot many, but uh, he can uh, if needed. And obviously he's a three point guy. You know, so it's great handles. He's a, he's a force to be reckoned with. You know, we got to make sure that we're uh, attentive to everything. Uh, pressure for 48 minutes and making them, making them make some tough ones. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, uh, it's definitely frustrating. Uh, you know, we, I mean, it's over now. We we move on to to the next game. Uh, but for sure, you know, we. We definitely can't lay eggs like that. You know, we, we got to come out with a lot of better focus and a lot more sense of urgency than what we've been having. Uh, that's been way, way unacceptable, and we all know that. So, you know, we got to be better these last 14, really lock in, and it starts with uh, with us three and our attention to detail and our focus. And when we're good and we're focused and locked in, the rest of the team can follow. Brad, when it's not easy when a guy suffers an injury or retires to get back to this level, to get back into the game. What does it say about Isaiah Thomas that he's been able to step away and then get back to this level? It speaks volumes, man, because I'm, I'm a huge IT fan from competing against him for so many years when he was in Boston and, uh, you know, being his teammate in D.C. as well. Like, I've, I've got a chance to see him every single day put the work in and, and uh, you know, the challenges that he went through as a player, uh, you know, overcoming some injuries too. But, you know, to be able to come back now, like you said, it's very unheard of. 
Uh, but I commend him, man. I salute him. He's always been a worker. Uh, he believes in the process. He trusts his work. And, you know, that's just the evolution of today's game and just the evolution of who he is. You know, he's he's always going to be a hooper. You know, there's nothing that can stop him or set him back um, from accomplishing his goals and dreams. And, and he's one that lives it out, man. So he's a great prime example, I feel like, to kids and to a lot of people, you know, of just going on and, and just keep pushing. You know, no matter if people tell you no, no matter if people shut you down, uh, he's heard it all, you know, and to see him back is I love it and I'm excited for him. With the experience you had with him as a teammate, what can he provide to the locker room for you guys right now? Uh, one, we all know he's a good offensive player for sure, but I think just his leadership, his ability to be able to uh, lead lead the locker room, um, encourage guys, you know, give his 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 IQ of the game, um, uh, which is which is super high. I think he'll definitely help me out a lot with running a point and just giving me some uh, different viewpoints and ways that I can attack uh, can attack that I may have not have seen before, you know, so, uh, and then just when we plug him in, like he's, he's going to be dynamic for us. He's going to be a scorer. He's going to be able to help us. So, you know, we need that, that shooting, his shooting ability, uh, cause we need more threes. You mentioned his work ethic, just what impresses you the most about it and just his commitment to get better and, and continue to evolve as a player. I feel like you just said everything, <laughs> but he's, all of those things, you know, um, you know, work ethic is something that you have to have. You can't necessarily give it to somebody, you know, um, and he was born with it uh, from when he was in high school. You know, everybody called him small. Everybody called him too small. Everybody said he couldn't make it. And he's, he's checked every box and accomplished every goal that and rolled off every naysayer there is. And I think that's what continues to push him and motivate him. And then he. I know he has uh, three beautiful kids that he, that he raises and and that look up to him. So I know that pushes him and motivates him as well. Uh, but it's just exemplary. I think when you just have that love and passion for it, man, you'll do anything to get back to it. In film sessions, like going over Milwaukee and the three specifically, how important is accountability in those settings and watching those back? Oh, huge. And we had it today, um, one through 15. Everybody needs to be better with guarding the three-point line, have more of a sense of urgency of guarding our guys and getting out to shooters. Um, especially when teams, you know, have uh, stretch fives who can shoot. I think that's kind of what's been kicking our butt a little bit uh, as of late. So we got to be a lot better with that. Um, understanding personnel and just big sense of urgency. Like it's, it's go time. What is the mid game adjustment like as a defender when you have certain guys that you're okay with shooting, but once they knock down at you and making the adjustment there? Yeah, that's tough. I mean, we have to avoid those things. Like obviously, you're going to make adjustments. Guys are pros. You know, they're, they they lace them up just like we do. Uh, but at the same time, we can we can control a lot of the threes that that they're attempting, you know, just not even getting looks up. I think that helps us with uh, when guys are getting shots up and and, you know, getting good looks and balls ro rotating and popping and they're getting a good feel like it's it's, it's going to be tough to beat them that night. So uh, I think once we do a better job of starting the game and taking those initial actions away, we'll be a lot better suited throughout the game mentioned the sense of urgency what does that kind of look like after a couple of games stretch like that is it conversations is it just kind of a collective acknowledgement like we, we need to come out with more fire like what does that kind of look like I was a little bit of both like obviously we talk about it you know we we point out where we need to be better how we can be better um but the biggest thing is 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 just your commitment to it as an individual obviously you gotta look yourself in the mirror and, you know, decide how you can help benefit the team and how you can just give a little bit more. I think because that's what we all got to do. We just all have to give a little bit more than what we're giving, you know, and I think that'll, that'll put us where we need to be. But, you know, we got to we got to be honest with ourselves and, and have, like you said, that accountability. And once we have that, I think that propels us to be a better team and better, better fit team than what we we've been struggling with later lately. This week marks, of course, the March Madness beginning on Thursday. Florida Gators are in it. Mm -hmm. You've seen the brackets. Who are your top picks? Oh, that's tough, man. Uh, it's a lot of great, great tournament games. There's a lot of great conference games. Um, a lot of upsets. A lot of teams, you know, clicking right now before returning. Uh, I love UConn. I love Coach Hurley and what he does. I've always, I've always been a fan of him. So you're still the champs until you're beaten again. So I think. I think you obviously have to keep them. Uh, obviously, my Gators, but they're in a tough little, in a tough little region. Uh, at Houston, at the top, I think we could play Marquette in the second round, which is tough for me because Shocker recruited me in Florida, so that's a little, 
That's going to be a tough one for me. <laughs> That's going to be a tough one. Uh, but I hope Shocker, I hope Shocker does well. I am, I am pulling for him because he's everywhere he goes, he has success and, and he rallies his troops. Um, you know, so I'll have a tough, tough, tough Marquette coming out of what's that South region. Midwest is another tough one. Um, Purdue, Texas, Tennessee, I think. But I think I'm going. I think I went Purdue in that round. I like Zach. Zach's a seven four monster. We have the same agent too, so that's that, <laughs> that works. Uh, uh, and my boy C Love at, at Arizona. I hope I hope Caleb sees North Carolina in the Sweet Sixteen or Elite Eight, whatever Elite it is. Eight, yeah. Elite Eight knocks them off and finish his business like he should. Yeah, Elite Eight. My last game was here. Yeah, and uh, at Footprint. Yeah, and the first question I was asked is, are you going to the NBA right after the game? <laughs> <laughs> it's the craziest time ever. I was like, yeah, God, we can't even sit through the pound of the loss. Like, I'm just, what you doing now? Like, are you ready to go? Louisville? Yeah, it was Louisville. Louisville, yep. Yep. Who was on that team again? Oh, uh, that was Peyton Siva, oh. Russ Smith, Shane Bahannon, Gorgie Dang. Um, who else? Wayne Blackshear. Yeah. Russ was awesome those years. The Russ kicked our ass. Yeah, yeah, was was right. No, Kentucky won. Kentucky won 2012. Yeah, Davis. AD. AD, D Lamb. T. Yeah. Cal told me to come join that team too. I just I told him nah. I'd rather play against you, and I lost three damn times. <laughs> <laughs> lost three straight to Kentucky that year, and we were up twenty at half in both in both home and away games, and lost the games. Fair Man, to say, fair to say that Shaka was pretty much there's George Mason before then. We went to the 2006 Final Four, uh, but he was. Pretty much one of the first to have the mid majors enter the final four when he took BCU, BCU. right? Yeah. After he recruited you to Florida. Yeah. So Shaka actually left before I got to Florida. So I still have that little, I'm still mad at him for that. You know, he did all that hard ass work and, right. you know, you leave me once, you know, and then you go <laughs> have success somewhere else. Uh, him and Baby Patino, Rick Patino, little, little, little Patino was like that too. He left and, and he went to Minnesota and, and had his success too. So I was like, you know, you guys just left me out to dry. Right. Uh, but I, I always root for them. I'm always happy for those guys, man, those young coaches. Uh, they're super energetic, and, you know, they just – they relate to the, the kids a lot um, in today's game, and you can see that they get good results out of them. So I definitely – I'll always pull, I'll always pull for those guys, for sure. My last question was about the fact that you mentoring Jay before he got to Boston and Duke, of course, but what about Larry Hughes being the St. Louis – legend that he is with the Billikens in that great year they had in 98 under uh, Charlie Schoonhour. Mm -hmm. Schoonmaker. Yeah. Sp uh, Schoonhour. Schoonhour, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, no, Spoon is a great coach. But Larry, Larry's an unbelievable talent. Um, I didn't get to interact with Larry a lot growing up. Uh, some I wish I, I, I did have that relationship with him a little bit. Uh, he was actually related to Jason and his – and Larry and Jason's dad played on the same high school team. Yeah. So they have that affiliation. Uh, but Larry was was the prototype for everybody growing up. Like he and Larry, I mean, uh, he and D Miles and uh David Lee, like these guys like paved the way for all of us to you know, you know, come in and, and, and make a name for ourselves and kind of see how it is to be a pro and what the journey's like, you know. So, you know, I always salute uh Larry and commend him, you know, for being a pioneer in that regard and and just kind of just showing us the way and just showing us how to be pros. Sure.